Can you imagine if ChatGPT decided whether or not you lived or died? It's terrifying to consider. Unfortunately, it's more than just a hypothetical question. It's a reality. A groundbreaking investigation by 972 Magazine exposed Israel's use of an AI program to identify and kill over 37,000 people in the Gaza Strip. And as you can already imagine, there were lots of flaws with this program and thousands of innocent people were murdered. The Israeli AI death program is called Lavender. And believe me, it's not as sweet as the name suggests. In this video, we're going to explore the details of this explosive investigation and make sense of how AI is being used to commit genocide in Gaza. As always, we need to rewind a bit for some context. In 2021, the current commander of the Israeli intelligence unit 8200 authored a book titled The Machine Team, Intelligence That Will Revolutionize Our World. It made the case for a special machine learning program that could rapidly process massive amounts of data to generate targets during the heat of war, when human decision makers may be overwhelmed. 972 Magazine discovered that this AI program isn't just a theoretical concept, it actually exists. It's called Lavender, and the Israelis are using it right now in Gaza. Here's how it went down. Israel fed massive amounts of data about suspected operatives in Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, including low-ranking fighters into Lavender. And during the first weeks of the war, Lavender processed this data and generated 37,000 Palestinians as suspected militants and their homes for potential airstrikes. The IDF gave human decision makers permission to approve these targets with no requirement to scrutinize the AI decision making process. This means that if Lavender suggested a target, the IDF generally approved it without any question. The human officers took a back seat and played a junior co-pilot role, basically serving as rubber stamps for Lavender targets. Lavender makes a decision about who to kill, and the humans simply press enter and accept. The problem is that Lavender is known to make serious errors at least 10% of the time. These errors include targeting people who have a very loose connection, sometimes even no connection at all to Hamas or Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Oh my bad, he spells his name Ahmed with an A, not an E. Whoops, we just blew up the wrong person and everyone around him. To make matters worse, the IDF targeted these AI-generated suspects in the middle of the night while entire families were present. This is because it's easier to kill the target by killing them at their family home rather than during the course of their suspected military activity. To make matters even worse, an automated system known as Where's Daddy specifically tracked the AI suspects to their family homes and gave the order to kill. It shouldn't come as a surprise that thousands of innocent Palestinians, most of them women and children, or people completely uninvolved in Hamas activities, were killed in Israeli airstrikes. According to a human intelligence officer, he said, we were not interested in killing Hamas operatives only when they were in a military building or engaged in a military activity. On the contrary, the IDF bombed them in homes without hesitation as a first option. It's much easier to bomb a family's home. The system is built to look for them in these situations. Lavender and Where's Daddy aren't the only programs involved. Lavender is used in conjunction with another program known as the Gospel. Lavender identifies and targets people it believes to be suspected militants. Where's Daddy tracks this target to its home and notifies the army when they arrive. And the Gospel identifies and targets buildings it believes to be used by suspected militants. Part of the AI's mission is not just to make the killing of people more efficient. It's also meant to save the IDF money. Here's how. Lavender would identify a suspected low-ranking militant so that the Air Force could use an unguided bomb instead of a guided bomb. Unguided bombs are also known as dumb bombs and are much cheaper to use. Guided bombs are more expensive because they have attachments 
known as a JDAM system, which uses laser-guided GPS and other systems to guide a missile down to its target. Both bombs kill people and cause damage, but the difference is that guided bombs are more precise and therefore less likely to cause greater civilian casualties and property damage. Here's an example of how precise a guided bomb can be. When the US assassinated a ranking fighter in the Kata'ib Hezbollah militant group in Iraq back in January, they precisely targeted the car driving in the middle of a busy street. They managed to only kill the people in the car despite driving through a busy street. The use of an unguided bomb could have missed the target entirely by 30 to 150 feet and kill many other bystanders and civilians. So both bombs are deadly and capable of producing war crimes, but the use of unguided bombs is obviously worse. But to the IDF, what really matters is not how many civilian lives you can save, but rather how many dollars you can save. According to an intel officer, he said, you don't want to waste expensive bombs on unimportant people. It's very expensive for the country, and there's a shortage of these bombs. Notice the word unimportant. As if a civilian, a mother, a child, an entire family, is not important. Another source said they personally authorized Lavender's target list and bombed hundreds of private homes of suspected junior militants, which killed entire families. Understanding that their use of unguided bombs would cause high civilian casualties, the IDF decided to create a sort of margin of error. For every junior operative Lavender marked, it was permissible to also kill up to 15 or 20 civilians as collateral damage. And in the event that the target was a high-ranking Hamas official, the margin was upped to 100 civilians or more. Now this proves what many of us already know about the IDF. They are deliberately killing civilians. Now let's do some math. Keeping in mind that Lavender makes a mistake 10% of the time when it identifies a target. And as we know, they had at least 37,000 targets. So out of 37,000 potential targets, you can assume 10% or 3,700 people were mistakenly placed on the kill list. If you multiply 3,700 by 15, which is the lower end of acceptable civilian casualties, to the IDF, then we get 55,500 potential civilian casualties produced by Lavender's mistakes. This is a very basic formula to determine the range of possible casualties committed by Lavender. And we can assume that this potential number was acceptable to the IDF because they were aware of the 10% mistake. It seems like Lavender produced a lot of horrible results because it sometimes miscalculated how many civilians were inside the home. So let's say they identified a target, they would approve 15 civilians for the slaughter. But because so many people lost their homes in Gaza because of the ongoing genocide, so many people were staying with friends and family. So the IDF would end up killing not 15 civilians, but 35 because of this miscalculation. And in other cases, the IDF would strike a home full of civilians that didn't even contain the target they were looking for. Now, Israel has always murdered innocent civilians in pursuit of senior Hamas officials. But after October 7th, Israel went full genocidal and decided to also target low-ranking Hamas fighters. The targeting of low-ranking Hamas fighters, which could virtually be anyone in Gaza, since Israel considers everyone to be Hamas, produced a massive target list of at least 37,000 people. This is an impossibly large list for human officers to go through. They wanted to allow us to attack the junior operatives automatically. That's the holy grail. Once you go automatic, target generation goes crazy. Because the program did most of the heavy lifting, IDF soldiers started taking orders from the AI program. If it gave the order, a human approved it and allowed it to go through. At 5 a.m., the Air Force would come and bomb all the houses that we had marked. We took out thousands of people. We didn't go through them one by one. We put everything into the automated systems, and as soon as one of the marked individuals was at home, he immediately became a target. We bombed him and his house. Another officer said, it was very surprising for me that we were asked to bomb a house to kill a ground soldier whose importance in the fighting was so low. I nicknamed those targets garbage targets. So how does Lavender build its list of targets. Well, Lavender combines all sorts of data from the 2.3 million residents living in Gaza, such as their name, home address, 
facial features and biometric data, social media profiles and connections, phone calls, texts, and contacts information, etc. Lavender then combines all of this data to make an educated guess and apply a ranking for each and every person in Gaza. The rating is from 1 to 100. The higher the rating, the more likely Lavender believes you to be Hamas. This is dystopian and disgusting and dangerous. But let's discuss the obvious problems here anyway. Who does Israel consider to be Hamas? Is a police officer Hamas? Is an UNRWA aid worker Hamas? Is a professor at a university considered to be Hamas? The boundary is vague. Even more vague are the connections to the alleged Hamas members. If you sell food to a Hamas militant, are you considered connected to Hamas? If you're a doctor and you provide healthcare services to a Hamas fighter or his family, are you considered Hamas and therefore a target for Lavender? There are many ways for non-military targets to find themselves on the Israeli AI kill list. For example, Lavender considers cell phone information in its rating. Now let's say your phone dies and you don't have the ability to charge your phone or replace it because you're in the middle of a fucking genocide. And let's say you have a cousin who happens to be a police officer and therefore considered a Lavender target. What if that cousin of yours lets you borrow their phone so you can reach family members? Boom. Israel drops an unguided bomb onto you and your family, and you're all dead. According to the article, at least 10% of all Lavender targets were known to be errors. But this hasn't stopped the IDF from using the program and dropping the bombs anyway. And the officers who leaked this information to 972 also don't seem to take issue with this. It has proven itself. There's something about the statistical approach that sets you to a certain norm and standard. I have much more trust in a statistical mechanism than a soldier who lost a friend two days ago. Everyone there, including me, lost people on October 7th. The machine did it coldly, and that made it easier. So it's another degree of separation between the killer and the killed. It's like a pilot dropping a bomb. It feels more sanitary than directly murdering someone with your own hands. But it's still the same thing, murder. The officer also said that he didn't really care to scrutinize Lavender data about a low-ranking officer. He said when it comes to a junior militant, you don't want to invest manpower and time in it. In war, there is no time to incriminate every target. So you're willing to take the margin of error of using artificial intelligence, risking collateral damage, and civilians dying, and risking attacking by mistake and to live with it. The problem with this idea is that Israel isn't really in any kind of rush. The Hamas attack ended on October 7th. Israel isn't exactly in a hot war with a comparable military. They are fighting a defenseless civilian population. Another issue was how desperate the IDF was for more targets. Now the rating system was already loose and problematic, producing at least a 10% error rate on a total list of 37,000 people. But the IDF wanted more targets. They wanted more than just 37,000 people. The only way to do this was to loosen the already flawed rating system even further and kill people supposedly connected to Hamas based on even weaker information. The numbers changed all the time because it depends on where you set the bar of what a Hamas operative is. In a day without targets, we attacked at a lower threshold, but we were constantly being pressured. Bring us more targets. They really shouted at us. We finished killing our targets very quickly. The use of this program poses a ton of issues. Firstly, it's another example of how technology is often used, not for the advancement of peace and prosperity, but rather death and destruction. AI is often advertised to us as a revolutionary tool for human advancement, but like many other forms of technology before it, it's being used to kill. And this is just the beginning. There is an arms race all around the world to develop custom AI programs for military purposes. Whether it's using AI to engineer more powerful weaponry or developing a kill list, it presents a disturbing dystopian future for mankind and its favorite activity, warfare. There's also the military industrial complex to consider. It's widely known that Israel uses the West Bank and Gaza as laboratories to battle test tactics, equipment, and programs. There is no doubt that Israel will sell the use of its lavender program to militaries all around the world. One day soon, for just $19.99 per day, you will be able to use Lavender to murder 55,500 civilians. And if you subscribe in the next 15 minutes, you'll also get Where's Daddy? So you can drop an unguided bomb onto the private home of an innocent civilian. But wait, there's more! If you sign up right now, you'll get access to Gaslight GPT, an Israeli LLM AI model that automatically generates talking points like this is blood libel, you're anti-Semitic, and wait until we finish investigating so you can gaslight and manipulate the public.
Another thing to keep in mind is the role that US companies might be playing in supporting Israel's crimes. You see, it's possible that this entire AI program is supported by both Google and Amazon, which struck a $1.2 billion deal with the Israeli government in 2022 just a few years ago, to build three data centers for AI development. For Israel to train a machine learning program like Lavender with all of this data, a tremendous amount of machinery would be needed. Apparently, Google and Amazon may be providing Israel with these tools and equipment at their data centers. According to the Israeli government, Project Nimbus is our flagship multi-year plan and the first of its kind. The project is intended to provide the government, the defense establishment, and others with an all-encompassing cloud solution. Google is also providing the Israeli government with its full suite of machine learning and AI tools available through the Google Cloud platform. The documents indicate that the new cloud would give Israel capabilities for facial detection, automated image categorization, object tracking, and even sentiment analysis. Lastly, there is now an even stronger argument to make in the ICJ that Israel is deliberately killing civilians and therefore guilty of genocide. There are many other repercussions in the use of this AI program, so be sure to let us know what you think in the comment section of this video. You can read more information about Israel's use of AI in the 972 Magazine article, which is linked in the comment section or the description of this video. The production of this content is made possible by viewers like you. So be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and if you can, make a contribution to our Buy Me A Coffee link. Trust nothing. No